Hello everybody, this is Cap here, and I would like to welcome you to the fourth video in my Visual Basic tutorial series. So in this video, we are just going to be learning about strings and some string manipulation. So you declare strings like any other variable. Say dim the name of your, or whatever you want the name of your variable to be, as and string for the data type. So a string is basically a string of characters so you use strings to store like say you know a sentence like we could say double quotes and anything inside of the double quotes is stored in your variable say the great awesome so here we're actually going to make three Okay, so the first bit of string manipulation that we're going to learn here is concatenation. So, concatenating strings is basically combining two strings into one string. So in Visual Basic, you can do this by saying, you know, thing, which is our empty string. We can assign something ampersand another and then we can say console dot right line thing and then let's run it okay so as you can see it concatenated guy onto the end here so we combined something and another You can also use plus here, and it'll do the same thing, but it is recommended that you use the ampersand because the ampersand is specifically made for strings, and the plus operator you know, has a bunch of other uh, things that it does, so there's much less of a chance of an error if you just use the ampersand, which is specifically made for concatenated, concatenating strings. So let's go through a few more uh, manipulations. Uh, for example, substring. So substring is basically... Actually, I'll keep a uh, thing there. Substring is basically taking a part of another string and storing it into a string. So, for example, we could say thing equals something dot substring and let's just say we want it to start at four and then we want to get great the word great out of the string so we'll start at the index of four because it goes zero one two three four and then we want to take five characters after that so our second argument here would be five so let's save that and run it oh whoops have an error here. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Sorry, I added an extra parenthesis there for some reason. But anyways, let's run it. And as you can see, we got great. Which is exactly what we wanted to happen. So moving right along here. We can also get the index of a particular character within a string. So let's say we wanted to get the index of R out of this string. To do that, we could just say something dot index of R. And we could save it, run it, 
and it is at the index 5. So you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can also use ucase or lcase to change all of them to uppercase or all of them to lowercase. And that comes in handy when you're you know, comparing user input or something like that. Because we don't know what they're going to you know, type in. They could capitalize random letters here, there, and everywhere. So say that we wanted to compare it against something that had all capital letters. Well, we could just take the input and use the L case uh, function here and pass in something. Save it. Run it. Oh, sorry. That changes it all to lowercase. I was thinking, but yeah. So as you can see, it turned the T to a lowercase. And U case changes everything to uppercase. So we change this to U case here. It changes it all to uppercase. So, moving along again here, put some spaces in there. So let's say we wanted to trim off the leading spaces here. Well, we could use our trim. So we could say our trim something, or sorry, I don't know why. I keep getting all of these mixed up. Sorry about that, guys. Our trim would take all the spaces, all the trailing spaces off. And then L trim takes all of the leading spaces off. So this will take all of the trailing spaces back here off. So yeah, as you can see, those are still there. You can't really see that they're gone, but they are. So if we change this to L. As you can see, it took off all of the leading ones, but the trailing ones are there. So if we wanted to trim off both the leading and trailing spaces, we could use just plain old trim. And it takes them off the end and the beginning. So the next one here is replace. So say for some reason we wanted to replace all of the E's in this string with A's. Well you can do that with the replace function. Say something dot replace and we want to replace the E's with an A. So we'll just run that. And as you can see, it replaced all of the E's with A's. And the very last one that we're going to cover is insert. So let's say we wanted to insert something right after the. Well, we could say <clears throat> something dot insert. And our starting index would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Oops. So it would be 3. And then the string, let's just say very oh, I don't know why it's having these issues with brackets I'm pretty sure I put that in there but anyways 
run it, as you can see, it put in very, the very great, awesome. So, sorry about some of the mistakes in this video. Uh, it's pretty late at night here, but anyways, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you've seen a few of my videos, uh, you can, and you know would like to see when I post new ones, you can go ahead and subscribe. And I would like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.